Howdy. In this lesson, I'm going to be going over one of the details of the vortex panel method that you need to know for a cambered airfoil. So in a cambered airfoil, whenever we discretize this, our panels are not aligned with the x-axis. They have some slope. So first off, I'm going to give a label to that slope. So this is our x, y axes. And then our slope in relationship to those is going to be a beta sub i. So the problem with this <clears throat> is that all of our equations have the panel along the x-axis. So we'll define another axis. And this axis we're going to call the x-bar, y-bar. So this is our barred x and y. Let's look at the actual points of our first panel here. So the first point is just going to be some x sub i, y sub i. And our second point is x i plus 1 and y i plus 1. So whenever we want to transform these into the bar axis, we note that we want x bar i to be equal to 0, y bar i to be equal to 0, x bar i plus 1 to be equal to L, which is the length of our panel, y bar i plus 1 should be equal to 0. So <clears throat> I'm going to actually take an intermediate step in order to transform this arbitrary point, this arbitrary x and y, into this x bar and y bar. That intermediate step is to define a prime axis. And the prime axis is going to be in the same rotation as our x and y axes, but the origin is going to be placed at our first uh, panel point. So the transformation for this is very simple. It's just a simple translation. So x prime will be equal to x minus x sub i. And y prime is going to be equal to y minus y sub i. Once we do this, we need to transform from our prime axes, so this will be x prime and y prime, into our x bar and y bar. And of course, these are separated by this panel angle, which is our beta sub i. So we're going to use a uh, direction cosine matrix in order to just do this transformation. And it's pretty straightforward. But x bar is going to be equal to x prime times cosine of beta i plus y prime times sine of beta i. And then y bar is going to be equal to negative x prime sine of beta i plus our y prime of cosine of beta i. So that's everything we need to do in order to get this generic point x and y into the panel coordinates. So of course we'll have to do this separately for each panel and each panel will have its own coordinate system. But once you have it, you're able to find the stream function as a function of x bar and y bar, and then also u bar, x bar and y bar, and v bar in terms of x bar and y bar. So psi here is our stream function, and then u bar and v bar are simply the, uh, co the components of the velocity 
in the X bar and Y bar directions. So once we have these and would we just plug in our X bar and Y bar into our equations to get these then we need to transform these guys back from the y bar x bar frame into the x y frame and the way that we do this is again we'll use a direction cosine matrix but this time we'll be translating through a negative beta i so if our u bar and v bar look like this so this will be our u bar this right here will be our V bar. Then we need to rotate this through beta sub i in order to get this into a U and V. So U will be equal to U bar times cosine of beta i minus v bar times sine of beta i. Likewise, v is going to be equal to u bar times sine of beta i plus a v bar times cosine of beta i. And once we have these guys, then <clears throat> we simply have to realize that x bar and y bar uh, refers to exactly this point. And so then we have our stream function and then our two velocities in our original uh, coordinate system. So we have our psi from this term and then we'll have our u and v from this transformation.